Okay. Hi, everyone who's joined. I think I'll go ahead and get started uh, because I may have packed a little too much into my 20 minute session. So I'll go ahead and get started. Feel free to um, put things in the chat, although I may not be able to um, answer them live, but hopefully we'll have a few uh, minutes at the end for questions. But thanks for joining my intro to WAI ARIA, otherwise known as Accessible Rich Internet Applications. Uh, my name is Claire O'Keefe. I'm a digital, digital accessibility consulting engineer with Stanford's Office of Digital Accessibility. And I want to sort of give an overview of what ARIA is and why you would use it. Uh, so the first part of this acronym, WAI, stands for the Web Accessibility Initiative, which is um, part of the W3C, which is the, that international community that works together to develop web standards, including HTML, CSS, uh, SVG, MathML, and ARIA. So the ARIA spec or it comprises a suite of documents that define a way to make web content and web applications more accessible to people with disabilities. Uh, and what it does is it maps simulated web controls, sort of complex web controls that you may cobble together to equivalent control types on your platform accessibility API. So this is something that you use uh, when you're creating custom widgets, things that you might not have a native HTML element that really does what you want it to, or that has the functionality that you're trying to achieve. So you add ARIA attributes to your HTML markup to help better communicate the controls name, role, any state information about it um, to the, you know, to the browser, to the accessibility API with the aim of supporting users with disabilities who are using assistive technology. So let's just walk through that in a little bit more detail. So let's say, take the example of uh, a user who is blind and using a screen reading software to uh, browse the web. Uh, so when they are reading and interpreting content on the web, their assistive technology needs to be able to determine what it's interacting with uh, so that it can convey the appropriate information to the user. So this information is supplied by the browser. The you know, web content is taken by the browser, uh, takes the rendered DOM structure, and the browser converts that into what we call uh, an accessibility tree. And that tree is then interpreted by the accessibility API. And the screen reader can then access that information from the API and render it to the screen reader user. So that all got a little bit technical, um, which you don't have to understand to start using ARIA but I mentioned some of that detail to give a bit of an impression of the sort of hidden workings that are going on behind the scenes when assistive technologies are accessing web content. So making good use of ARIA, at some point, you, it may necessitate delving into the topic of the accessibility API and the accessibility tree to really understand what's going on. Um, and that's a bit beyond the scope of this presentation, but I do have the link at the end where you can um, get uh, where there's a resource that you can get a lot more of good, good information on that topic. Um, but so just suffice it to know that there's sort of a lot going on when you visit a web page of what's being rendered behind the scenes and how that is picked up and interpreted by assistive technology. So some examples of custom widgets that you may not have uh, an HTML, native HTML control that does what you want would be something like a tab structure. And I've got some screenshots here. One is showing a set of three tabs. Um, and when you would click on each one of those, you would see different information populated below. We don't really have an HTML tag for tabs. Another would be application style menus. So similar to something that you might see like in a desktop application like Word or PowerPoint. Uh, if you're making a web application that has a similar type of menu, uh, again, you don't really have something built in with HTML to mark that up with. I have a screenshot of um, actually the Google Slides menu. So when I was creating this deck, I was trying to find an example of an application style menu online and I just looked right up there and there it is. Within Google Slides, it's a web application, it's all on the web page, but it's giving you the same kind of functionality that you get from a desktop application. 
Another um, example is a tree structure. Again, I can pull from Google for this. The, when you're looking at your Google Drive on the left-hand side, you have a tree structure that you can drill down through folders and you can drill through files. Again, you don't have a native web component for that. Another would be switch buttons where you're turning something on and off or a combo box. Again, an example occurred in the Google Slides application. When I search through the help, there's a search field in help and there's options populated below that you can choose from. It dynamically gives you a list of options. So that's another thing that um, is hard to cobble together a web solution for that is understandable. So some example ARIA roles that you might turn to for some of those example widgets or you know, other roles are uh, ARIA has a role of tab list and with it you would use other uh, elements that are given a role of tab. Uh, for a menu, ARIA can give you a menu. You can add the role equals menu to your markup and then add role equals menu item to the children of that. Sim same type of thing with a tree. You can mark something up with role equals tree and add tree items beneath that. Simpler, now those are some complex widgets. Um, simpler roles would be a switch. That doesn't take as much effort and markup as some of those more complex ones. Uh, role of combo box is a pretty complex one. There's a lot more that goes into it. Uh, some other simple ones are checkbox, radio button, uh, the role of, of button, just a plain button. And there's also a role of presentation, um, which if you've never heard of that, it basically says, this is not an interactive control. It's, um, th this is nothing, it's just a container. Uh, so you could theoretically put role equals presentation on a button element, and you've basically told the accessibility API, this is no longer a button. There's nothing to see here. It's just a container. So these are just some of the roles that you can apply, and I'll give you uh, a little bit more detailed example. So I had a screenshot of tabs. So how can we use ARIA to make that more accessible? So I've got a vanilla HTML markup here, and this is something that you might see in the wild, something similar to this, where you may have a div container, uh, you may get a class of tabs or something like that. You've got your styles applied so that it looks like tabs. And within that, you've got three buttons so that I could, you could click on each one of those buttons to reveal diff different information in the sort of tab panel area below. But going back to, let's say our screen reader user, uh, if they are interacting with this, with their screen reader, this doesn't really tell you that these are tabs. It doesn't tell you what's going to happen when you click on one of these buttons. It doesn't give you any sort of structural or state information. You don't know which tab is currently active, you know, which has the content currently being shown below. So this is where you can sort of bring in ARIA to assist. Now, this is just a stub markup. It's not fully fleshed out, um, but just gives you an idea of how you can add ARIA to make this more accessible. So instead of just having your plain old div container for your tabs, you can give that role equals tab list. And then each one of your buttons, you can sort of convert those into tabs by giving them role equals tab. And then there's some other attributes that you would want to add. I've added ARIA expanded. And on the first one, I've got ARIA expanded equals true. That means that I'm currently looking at the description tab. And when you click on the reviews tab, then it would say our expanded equals true on that one. And the other one would toggle to false. So this starts giving um, the screen reader and other assistive technology more information about what this content on the web page is, how to use it, you know, what it does. You can also use ARIA for uh, naming. So this is an example here. I've got um, two sections with headings with a little blurb under each heading and a learn more link under each one. Now, if I were a screen reader user and let's say I was navigating this in you know, one of two ways. There's one way I, can, I could tab through all my links and buttons on the page and I would just hear what each one is called. Another way is I could pull up a list of links or buttons. And in either one of those ways, when that user encounters this, uh, they just hear learn more, which doesn't really tell you where you're going to go, learn more about what. So you would have to inspect the surrounding content to figure out what is it I'm going to learn more about when I click on this link. So you can use ARIA to sort of override that link text 
and add some more you know, information inside of it. So you could, instead of just having learn more, now someone might hear learn more about browser plugins, learn more about manual testing. Um, so that's one way you can use ARIA to make things more accessible. Another uh, labeling thing you can do with ARIA is using ARIA labeled by, and that's where you can sort of reference different elements on the page that have a properly assigned ID uh, to give, to sort of um, add a label onto something. So in this case, I've got basically a question of what, how you feel about ice cream. So it's got a table that says, I like ice cream in the left column. And then you've got three radio buttons each under a column. And so you have a radio button for agree, one for neutral and one for disagree. So what are you gonna label those radio buttons as? You don't wanna label it, each of them, I like ice cream, because then they're all labeled the same. And you don't know whether it's agree, whether it's neutral or disagree. You don't wanna label it just as agree, neutral or disagree, because then you lose the context of I like ice cream. So you can use ARIA label by to reference those two different related pieces of text. So the one in the center, the neutral one, I could have it labeled by both the I like ice cream piece of text and the neutral piece of text. So that when I come to this radio button, I would hear with my screen reader, I like ice cream neutral. And that very clearly tells you what you're gonna be selecting when you choose this choice. Uh, some other properties that you can use in this case for communicating state. Um, one of the screenshots I had before was for like a switch that you could toggle on and off. In this case, it's a, it's a mobile view off. This was in the context of a something, uh, I was creating a survey and I was previewing it and you can toggle whether you want to see the mobile view or not. So currently it's shown as off. So in this case, you could use, if you marked this up with role equals switch, and then you could add on additional attributes to communicate the state. You can add the aria checked attribute and give it false because it is currently off. When, you, when someone clicks on it and turns it to on, then that would change to aria checked equals true. Now you could also use a checkbox for this, which we'll sort of address later in terms of when to use aria, uh, maybe when not to. This could have been done with a checkbox, but you can do it with aria. Another is, I talked about this a little bit with the tabs example, um, aria expanded equals true. You can put on accordions um, to mark them as expanded or not. You can use ARIA, ARIA current um, to communicate. In this case, I've got um, a left nav that shows me which page I'm currently on visually, but there's no programmatic indication. So you can use an ARIA attribute uh, to, to communicate that. Some rules for ARIA, use native HTML elements and attributes whenever possible. So if you can use a checkbox, use a checkbox. If you can just use a button element, use a button element. There's no need to reinvent the wheel uh, unnecessarily. Don't override native HTML element semantics unless necessary. So don't take an H2 element and give it rule of link. That just really has a conflict of what it is. Any interactive controls must be keyboard accessible. So you don't get keyboard accessibility baked in or you know, for free when you start adding ARIA, you have to build that in yourself. Don't use role of presentation or aria hidden equals true on a focusable element. Uh, that will really sort of mess up how things render to uh, a screen reader, for example. And any interactive elements must have an accessible name. Fundamentally, no aria is better than bad aria. Uh, and bad aria can really degrade the accessibility of a web page uh, you know, when it's not done correctly. So you really need to dig into the spec and follow the spec. And another important thing is that ARIA does not, when you start adding ARIA roles and attributes, it does not really change the browser's behavior, how that content is rendered. So if you put role equals button on a div, nothing happens visually. It doesn't change visually and it doesn't automatically become something you can tab to or click on. So you have to add all that stuff in manually. But adding those things can impact the way assistive technology behaves and way, the way it interacts with the content. Uh, so that's sort of that like deeper stuff that's going on behind the scenes that you might um, start digging into the accessibility tree to sort of understand. So be careful with ARIA. Uh, a couple of common mistakes are really using inappropriate ARIA structures for the content you're working with. A good example that I see commonly is putting role of menu on website navigation menus. It's frequently not appropriate and doesn't really fit the content. 
using any real complex ARIA widget without the required attributes, children, and associated keyboard event handling. Like I said, you don't get much for free. You got to add that in yourself um, manually. Um, and adding redundant ARIA roles uh, to native HTML elements. So if you have a nav element, you don't need to add role equals navigation. It's the same thing. Just use your, just keep it as nav. Uh, forgetting to state, set initial state attributes. So if you want to commu communicate that something is expanded or collapsed, it needs to be set as the correct thing at the start at the page load and then continuously updated when someone interacts with it. And also using invalid ARIA attributes on various elements. So some of these attributes can only be used on certain roles. So for example, you can't use ARIA checked on a button. Uh, so some good resources around the web. I will you know, have these slides posted online so that you can make use of these links. Um, but sort of fundamental one is going straight to the, R the primary ARIA, ARIA spec. Um, and the tip for how I really use this is less scrolling through this extremely long page and more about going directly to the role or the attribute that I want to look into. So you can just basically go to that URL, add hash, and then whatever the ARIA attribute is that you're thinking of using or the role, and then it'll go straight there and you can start digging into you know, how it's used. Um, the authoring practices will give you information on you know, how to flesh out some of those complex widgets and what's required. Uh, ARIA and HTML will tell you kind of what ARIA roles you can use on certain HTML elements. Um, using ARIA goes over those rules that I already went over. And a couple of resources from WhatSoc, uh, which is a well-maintained website with a lot of good information regarding ARIA and accessible widgets and examples. Um, but this, if you're interested in digging into the accessibility tree and the accessibility API and how those, you know, impact your web development, um, definitely go there because there's a really good resource to read some more about that. Uh, I think we only have a couple minutes for questions, um, but uh, while I'm checking for those in the chat, I want to put up this slide that you can connect with um, our team in various ways. You can email us, join our office hours, and there's a Slack uh, community of practice that uh, you can join to talk um, all about accessibility. I see one question, which was please define focusable elements. So it's really things like links, buttons, input fields, anything you can tab to on a web page or that you would be able to click, that you know you would want to click on, it should be keyboard focusable. You should be able to tab to it. Okay. I wanted to say uh, thank you, Claire. Um, will you be posting this on your on the webcam page on your session yes. page? Okay. Yep. Yep. It will definitely be posted. Um, I also wanted to say there's a social hour at 3 p.m. today for anyone who's interested in joining us. Um, any other questions for Claire? All right, well, like I said, feel free to reach out in any of these ways um, to connect and go into any of these topics in more detail. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.